Hello, my name is Rory Connolly. I'm an emergency physician at the Ottawa Hospital. This presentation is aimed for focus users at the Ottawa Hospital who already have some experience with lung ultrasound and may be using lung ultrasound on patients with COVID-19. We're going to briefly review some focus lung basics and then review a protocol you can use to systematically image the lungs in COVID patients. Finally, I'm going to show you some examples of lung ultrasound on COVID positive patients. As a reminder for patient safety, quality assurance, and so the ultrasound team can give you feedback on your scans, it's important to save your scans to QPAT. You can use stills for each lung zone and Cineclips for abnormal findings. To help standardize our documentation, please use the epic smart phrase dot lung focus. If you don't already have access to this, you can email me or just steal it from my list of smart phrases. Lung ultrasound has been proven to be very helpful for several applications, especially for the diagnosis of pneumothorax, pulmonary edema, and pleural effusions. Here's what a normal lung ultrasound looks like. You can see a normal, thin, hyperechoic pleural line highlighted by the yellow arrow. Normal lens lighting is demonstrated here, which is the movement of the parietal and visceral pleural against one another. Lung sliding can effectively remove pneumothorax after differential. The red line below is an A-line, which is an artifact, which is a normal finding in an air-filled thorax. This slide here demonstrates a lack of lung sliding, demonstrated by the yellow line. Lack of lung sliding can be seen in pneumothorax, but there are other potential causes, including ARDS, bullous COPD, apnea, malignancy, and pulmonary fibrosis. A more specific sign for pneumothorax is a lung point, which can be seen here. You can see an area of normal lung sliding on the left of the screen, and then an area of no lung sliding on the right. Anytime you detect no sliding, you should slide down the chest with your ultrasound probe to find a lung point. Here's an example of B-lines. B-lines are discrete, laser-like, vertical, hyperechoic reverberation artifact. They arise from the pleural line and extend to the bottom of the screen without fading. They move synchronously with lung sliding. In this example, the B-lines have become more numerous and are coalescing together. A B-profile can be diagnostic for CHF in the correct clinical context. To diagnose a B-profile, you need at least three B-lines in at least two zones bilaterally. B-lines may indicate different disease states, including cardiogenic pulmonary edema, interstitial lung disease, infections, and ARDS. But this is also very helpful to diagnose pleural effusions. You can see an effusion, which is the anechoic region superior to the diaphragm, demonstrated by the yellow arrow. Of note, you can see the thoracic spine posterior to this, marked by the red arrows, which normally, with no effusion, you would not be able to see. This is known as the spine sign. Pleural effusion on POCUS in the correct clinical context will increase the positive predictive value for CHF. When assessing for cardiogenic pulmonary edema or for pneumothorax, you can look anteriorly and laterally and get excellent information. But with infection, it's necessary to have a more systematic approach looking anterior, laterally, and posteriorly. For pulmonary edema, it is common to use an 8-zone approach, but for COVID and infections, we suggest a 12-zone protocol looking at 6 zones on each side. You can see the labeled zones here. If it is not possible to scan the posterior zones due to patient constraints, then the most posterior aspect of the lateral area should be scanned. The operator should also slide laterally back and forth through each zone, like a Zamboni, covering as much of the chest wall as possible. It seems that COVID has a predominance for the lower and posterior lobes, so it's vital to image the posterior aspect of the thorax. Sending the ultrasound machine to a lung setting will optimize the quality of your image. You should set your depth to at least 10 centimeters. We advise starting with the probe in transverse with the probe marker towards the head. If you do see an abnormality, you can switch the probe to oblique or longitudinal to increase the amount of pleural that you're viewing. You can use either the phased array probe seen on the right or the curvilinear probe seen on the left. This slide demonstrates that it's necessary to cover the entire zone with the probe, as demonstrated by the arrows in zone 2. While there is not a unique diagnostic ultrasound findings for COVID-19, viral pneumonias do have characteristic findings. And as we scan more COVID cases, we are hoping to further characterize these findings in terms of a potential role in prognosis and diagnosis. We're going to review some of these common findings, including B-lines, subpleural consolidations, pleural, pleural irregularity. It is unlikely to see large pleural effusions in COVID-19. 
an excellent example of a subpleural consolidation, which is the anechoic area marked by the yellow arrow. There are also coalescing B lines seen here. Subpleural consolidations are commonly seen in infections such as bacterial or viral pneumonia, but can be seen in pulmonary embolus and malignancy as well. On the left of the screen is an ultrasound clip of a patient with confirmed COVID-19 pneumonia. The patient presented to the emergency department on day three of symptoms with fever. They were found to be tachypnic and had mild hypoxia. The lung ultrasound demonstrates confluent B lines associated with irregularity of the pleural line. You can compare this to a normal pleural line on the right side of the screen. The findings of irregular pleural line can be seen in several inflammatory processes, such as pneumonia, ARDS, and ILD. Importantly, the pleural line in CHF is not irregular, which can be very helpful in differentiating this condition. Here's another ultrasound of a COVID positive patient showing an irregular pleural line and subpleural consolidation marked with the yellow arrow. There are also multiple B lines. Here's another example of a patient with confirmed COVID-19. This is on day nine of their symptoms. And you can see a view of the left lower and left upper lobes here. The patient has multiple findings of viral pneumonia, including a thickened pleural line, confluent B lines, and subpleural consolidations. Pictured here is an ultrasound finding showing lung consolidation marked by the yellow arrow. This is classically seen in bacterial pneumonia. With a normal lung ultrasound, you cannot make out lung tissue, whereas here the lung is clearly visualized and has a similar appearance to the liver, hence we refer to this as hepatocytization. This is a reminder again to save your images so we can give you feedback on your scans and use the Epic Smart Phrase to document your findings efficiently in the chart. Best of luck with your scans. Please contact me with any questions that you have.